walk in, you're like, yes, black folks. Your numbers, will you tell them that? For real, though. I got caught cheating. You did. You know, she did. And now, loud, we keep a 100. Now, tonight we're dating, uh, we're discussing dating from a man's perspective with a bit of a twist. I have four amazing men joining me to talk about what they love and hate about dating, monogamous relationships, and if they still exist or are realistic. And what's going on in their DMs? Because, you know, I like to get a little nosy and find out what they got going on in their DMs. And ladies, don't forget, don't worry, I'm here to hold it down and let these fellas know what we're looking for in a relationship. So let's get into it. Please welcome Arthur and uh, love coach Byron Jamal, comedian hey. T Dub, and two single actors from some of your favorite films and television shows who are trying to master the world of dating in Hollywood. Donovan Carter from HBO's Ballers and Norman Towns from the hit film I Am Ali. Fellas, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, we we gonna we gonna we gonna be acting up tonight. Is that what's going on? No, Prince T no. is already laughing. I didn't say nothing yet. So all right, I feel it's gonna be a mischievous group right here. No, we ain't gonna do that. No, I want you to be mischievous because I'm mischievous, so it's okay. okay. Mischievous, yeah. We don't gotta be buttoned up here. We are gonna like let it all hang out. I really want to know because I feel like talking to my girls and, and it's like hearing women rationalize what they think a man wants or what they think certain behavior means. This uh, they're probably so wrong. And we need to be having these conversations like, you know, with, you know, across the aisle, not just amongst our friends. You know what I mean? I just feel like you just get, you're going to get the answer that, you know, you want to hear. So um, how, let's just get into your, your dating lives during the pandemic. Uh, have y'all been able to, to date during the pandemic or how has your life changed during this pandemic? Who goes first? Whoever wants. Let's go with you, Norman. <laughs> you go first, man. Um... I think dating is, is <laughs> tough during the pandemic. It's kind of tough outside of the pandemic in LA, the way it's set up. But um, you know, you have you have the people that you kind of talk to, that you've been talking to, that you kind of go back to, to where you feel safe with. Norman, um, are you are you getting some in the pandemic? Is what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. I, I okay. Get some <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, Byron, <laughs> pandemic dating, how, how adjustments? So I, I lucked up and I do already have a partner, so I'm good. But a lot of my clients are going through that process right now and it is difficult. But I will say that, especially for women, it's a lot uh, safer because now you can do a lot of video chatting and it's not, you're not expected to meet guys in, in public. You know, they always say uh, men and women have two different approaches when they go on a date. A man is trying to get laid and a woman is trying not to get killed. So uh, <laughs> the reality is that uh, we have two different approaches. And yeah, my, my clients all have those different issues. Okay, Donovan, how about yourself? How's this pandemic been affecting your love life? Oh uh, man, I'm in Los Angeles, so it's been kind of shut down for the most part. So um, I'm not a big online dater too much. So it's kind of, it's kind of ebb and flow, kind of piggybacking off of Norman, like kind of like talk to people who I've been talking to, but then you realize why we wasn't talking in the first place. Yeah. And LA is one of those places, I lived there for some two decades actually. Brothers have it kind of easy in LA. Like let's keep it a buck. Like, there's a lot. Of what you mean by it? It's you know what? what let me mean? let me let me let me pull back. Let me fall back because I when I said I wasn't gonna do that. My <laughs> opinion is it seems to be a lot of a lot of single girls there, and it seems like the ratio is really in you know. Nah, in, I don't think men have it easy. I don't think men have it easy out here. I think uh, it's actually you know what? I think it's really it's tough serious. for men. Okay. Because a lot of the women that you meet are somewhat opportunists. Like people don't move to LA just to, you know, fall into a relationship or be with somebody. Like there's always alternative motives that they, they come into. So I think it's kind of hard because you're, you come to LA to work or advance in a career and you meet women that are thinking the same way. So they're constantly going for things outside of who you are. So I think it's actually kind of tough for men. 
the bigger. Yeah. See, I, 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 I thought that just applied to the women looking for men like that. Y'all are just always waiting for the bigger, better deal. So the men are feeling that way too. I mean, and and to me, man, LA is expensive too. Like to go out and eat and then drink like constantly, like sure, you know, you got you got to just budget, make sure you're going to the right places with uh with some of these girls because it it can, it can add up after a while for sure. That's you real. Said, you said to drink constantly. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, we need yeah. to have a fun day. I mean, you know, we you, we can't, you know, <laughs> if you're gonna eat and drink, you know, sometimes we gotta, you know, you could drink. I'll just I'll just sip on my water. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine it would be it, it would get a little expensive, especially if you're you're, you're paying on a lot of these dates. Prince Cedar, what, what, how's it been for you? Uh, it's been a little a little tricky for me because my kids live with me. They've been doing e learning and. Uh, you know, you can't bring everybody around the kids. You can't go around everybody, people wearing a mask. So I just been being a father this whole time. And, uh, uh, has the pandemic made people more responsible or yeah, just more it, sneaky? Uh, definitely made me more responsible because now I actually got to sit home with the kids. You know, I could send them to school at first, you know, now I got to <laughs> sit. <laughs> we, we got a couple of YouTube comments I want to share with y'all. Tony says, whoo, these men are fine, okay. Get in their DMs. RJ oh, says, I, RJ said, I can tell this show's about to be about something good. And Kimberly said, what do we have here? A sele selection of men on this great Tuesday. So y'all getting some love already from the, 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 the chat. They love when we have the brothers on the show. So um, before we move forward, I want to ask uh, who's single. I need to know relationship status of everybody. Byron, you said you have a partner, right? Yes. Okay. How long? Two years. Oh, okay, two years. Okay, Norman, you out in these you, you in the streets? I want to say I'm in the streets, but I'm I'm single. You can say I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donovan. Uh, I'm single as well. I mean, there's really no streets to be. Yeah, I'm chilling. Yeah, uh, we all stuck. Prince <laughs> it's Prince complicated for me. You know, I. I'm single, but it's like I'm, you know, I got people that'd be mad if they heard me say the wrong answer. I say that. You know. I get it. See, yeah. yeah I, they probably, I'm sure they all are watching right it's now. It's complicated. You know, it's complicated. You know, it's complicated. I'm always on the go. I think you might, <laughs> if you have multiple people, I think maybe the public thing to say might be, I'm talking to someone. Huh? I said, maybe you could say, I'm talking to someone, and they all could just think you're talking about that, that one. I want to get you in trouble. You want a direct answer. You know, it's complicated. You know, it's complicated. <laughs> Me, I don't even want, it's so complicated. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky. Okay, now, uh, Byron, you wrote a book called Dating Men as a co-ed guide to men and women. Tell us about your background and, and what inspired you to write this book. So this book was really important for me because a lot of times we think that men and women are so far off, there's that whole book about, you know, men and women, Venus and Mars. And for me, I really know that we have a lot of things that we want that are exactly the same. As a former pastor, I used to deal with people in my office all the time who were talking about things that were exactly the same, things they couldn't say in the, in the sanctuary, but they could say in my office. And so being able to know the behind the scenes, what really people are dealing with, all men and women want the same thing when it comes to being trusted and trustworthy. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be respected. Everybody wants to feel secure. There are just common things that people want. And, you know, all these little tricks and schemes about dating. Honestly, if you deal with yourself, you can attract a lot more love. So that's what I teach in this book. And that's why I wrote it so that people could read it across the aisle like we're doing today. Former pastor. Yeah, um, yeah, you know I gotta jump. I know, on that. I know. It's always, it's always, it always comes up. It's okay. <laughs> I heard it goes down in the church scene. Oh my! Yeah, like yeah. even more so. Oh yeah. Well, you know they say whenever there's a major conference in a city, um, the beds are really nasty afterwards, and the pornos that are rented in the hotel rooms they they always go up. Jeez. <laughs> Well, the ones that are being all judgmental some of the time, they be getting in the most and be leaving the biggest mess in the hotel room. Is that what you're telling well, me? That's kind of why I left the church. Is It's not because the church is a great space that can do a lot of great things for people. It's just that you can't be free in the church. It's a judgmental space and a lot of hypocrisy. And so if I found that stuff I could tell my 
parishioners in the back room. I couldn't say in the pulpit, but all those people were Doing in the, you know, in the yeah. pulpit and they were in the sanctuary. So yeah, I just wanted a space where I could be free. And now the work that I do, love coaching, uh, I can, I can do that without the walls of the church. Oh, I know you could tell some stories. I got them. Okay. All right. <laughs> no names, no names, no names. Oh, no, just, just, just major hints. Okay. <laughs> Donovan, you starred in the football drama Ballers, love it, alongside Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, after being on such a hit series, what's dating life been like for a guy like you? I mean, hot show, super successful. What's it like for you? Oh, man, it was a, it was a transition. Like, I, I used to play sports growing up. I went to UCLA, played football there. So I was kind of used to, like, you know, being an athlete. You get a little bit of tension from the ladies a little bit. But, uh, but it was definitely different because now, you know, they see your face like, you know, this is like, aren't you that guy? So, um, you know, it's kind of like just just figuring out like who, who who's for you or who wants to just be around you because of the scene. But I'm a big uh, I'm a big person. I'm picking up on energy mm-hmm. and what type of person you are. So I just kind of just, uh, you know, just listen to what, you know, the girls say. I mean, of course, I get, you know, options, you know, sliding, you know, sliding DMs or seeing me out. You know, they want to say hi, they want to do this. But, you know, I'm a fine guy. I like to have a good time. But I actually just, you know, listen and see, like, you know, what what you say. Because a lot of times girls, I feel like, will tell you, you know, who they are and what they're about in their uh, they first encounter. And I'm, I'm real big on first first impression and uh, first time meeting you. Is it obvious to you as a man, you know, actor on a you know, successful show, um, is it obvious when there's a motive? Or have you ever been surprised when you thought, Ah, oh, this one seems like a real one. Then you find out it really was just about the, kind of like the, the floss, the gloss, the, the outer, you know what I mean? The parts. Cause I, that, that, I mean, it definitely goes down in LA for sure. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could, you could tell the thirsty ones, you know, a little bit, you could just, you know, just kind of tell, just pick up, pick up on the energy, but it took, it took me a minute at first, you know, I had to kind of pick up, I call it my, you know, Spider-Man senses kind of got to pick it up, but you got to go through that. You got to go through, uh, mistakes or, you know, you got to go through things to kind of learn from it. And sometimes, you know, you got you to learn the hard way. But, um, but I mean, L.A. is just a place everybody wants to be known. Everybody wants to be seen. So I just, I think it's kind of funny because, like, they say they don't want to do this, but then you look at their Instagram, you look at their social media and all the stuff that they post, and, like, you know, I thought you didn't want to be in the business. So, you know, yeah. just kinda, it's kind of it's kind of funny, you know, funny sometimes. I mean, I think everybody in L.A. wants to be in the business. Even, I mean, yeah. it's pretty much, that's why you go there. So we have a comment about you in the, in the chat. Uh, CM says Donovan seems very honest, very mature. Uh, okay, Norman, you, you've been lucky enough to work on set around ladies like Issa Rae and Yvonne Orji. And how, how are the ladies treating you when it comes to dating? How's it been for you? It's, it's been, it's actually been okay. It hasn't been like bad, but like, I don't know. I'm moving to space where like, I'm always myself. So I kind of attract like, girls that are really attracted to me mm-hmm. I don't really try to like conform my depth but I mean I, I've always I've never really had that big of an issue like finding something or you know with dating but I think sometimes it's like us like sometimes it's like I'm not in a place to deal with certain emotions that come with it at that time so like if I'm busy doing something it's like dating isn't just you know, you want to find somebody that you're compatible with, but at the same time, there's a lot of emotional pull and a lot of things that you have to deal with that you might not be ready for. So, like, for me, it's just making sure that I'm in a good place so that whoever I attract is in a good place with me. But It seems like you and um, Donovan are really uh, have a lot of self-awareness about where you are. We both play sports. <laughs> like, I play like college basketball in Texas right there in Dallas and then Montana, but it's like, I think you just – figure out who you are early. It's good to see. Prince uh, T-Dub, as a, uh, as a comedian, you talk about dating a lot. We have a clip, let's take a look. If you cheating with me, I can keep a secret. But if you get caught, don't get the line because it make me look bad. Now I'm messing with this chick for a couple of months. I call her phone the other day, her boyfriend picked up. Now under code 5129C in the side of the handbook, I did what any side is supposed to do. I hung up phone. This don't call me back. I hear her all in the background. I don't even mess with him like that. I told him to stop calling me. Now he get his ass on the phone acting tough. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been a side chick, uh, a side dude before? I'm sorry. Have you been a side dude before? Yeah, it wasn't. 
willingly. I found out I was <laughs> he one. Tricked you? Yeah, she, she tricked me into being one, you know, and uh, I think that it should be some type of criminal charges for us to get <laughs> what she did to be. The guys <laughs> care about that though? Do, do y'all, or is it just like, oh, good good for me. I don't have to like check in with her like that. I, it's, it's easy ass. Or does it hurt to find out that you're a side dude? Uh, well, if you direct with it, like if the male call, like in, in my situation, you know, where, you know, I tried to call her and get in contact with her. I didn't know he was there. You know, I didn't know none of this. You know, and he answered and she tried to flip it like I was the one coming on her. No, we in a, no, you can't do that. You know, you can't. So that was my problem. But uh, I was tricked. Because I, <laughs> I know we joke about it a lot. Right. And, you know, it, most women think, oh, they don't care. They don't have the same feelings like we do. And I kind of want to like unveil that kind of stuff. Like if that's- No, no, we, 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 that, it hurts us. You know, it hurts us. Yeah. Uh, I was just talking to one of my friends uh, who uh, on the tour with me and he landed and he went to um, one of his, he just found out he was one. He didn't know. He went on Instagram and looked at her story and found out she was pregnant with twins. You know, and she's happy with the child's father. We didn't know they was together. I got to cheer him up this whole trip. You know, I got to get him back up, you know? So he, uh, it really hurts us. You know, <laughs> it really, you know, to be pregnant with twins, this ain't no, you know, this is, this different. I mean, like, if that was your girl, it would hurt you. Right. Yeah. Like, if, that was, if that was my girl, that would hurt. But if it's not my girl, I'm not gonna be really that hurt about it. Really? You know what, we're gonna make a quick break. We're going to come back. I want to get more into this because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about, you know, about men's feelings. And I think we need to have a real conversation. But I, I'm, I'm all for it. I love that y'all are giving these honest answers. We'll be back with more Out Loud on Fox Soul when we return. Welcome back to Out Loud. We're having a super fun and honest conversation about dating, feelings, relationships with the fellas. Uh, ladies, I think this is a show that y'all need to pay attention to. And, and men too. I just think that we need to be a little bit more honest about this. Now, before we went to break, we we're kind of, you know, talking about feelings and how much we care or we don't care and if it's fronting or not. And Norman, you were basically saying that if it ain't my girl, girl, I don't give a shit basically about what she doing over there. Yeah, 100%. Really though, but if is it is the how about the ego? Does that bother the ego at all, or is it, do you really can you really be that detached with someone that you're intimate with? I, I can personally, but I mean I can, I can be that detached, but I I feel like maybe all men. Do you think like I feel like for women, it's like it's hard for them to be with somebody that they're not really connected with emotionally, but for a man. I can be like, I can hook up with a girl that I'm not necessarily connected with emotionally, um, but I could be connected with them physically or like attracted to them physically as opposed to having like that emotional base. But if it's my girl that I do have an emotional base with, then that would destroy me if she had twins. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's if like- one, Just one, hey, shoot, that would just destroy me. Man. It seems like there's such an extreme with, with men, and I hate to generalize, but it's either um, this attitude of whatever, or you get the dude that is permanently scarred for life because someone broke up with him or hurt his feelings in seventh grade, and now, oh, bitches ain't shit. I don't trust, I don't trust no girls. I don't want to get my heart. You're like, well, babe, when were you hurt? It was a while ago. Well, exactly when? Ninth grade. And you're like, a lot of women, we get our heart broken every single summer, right? Or every year. And we have to get back on that horse because I guess, do, do y'all care about love? Do you I care about love and marriage and all that kind of stuff? Or is that just mostly something that we're brought up that that's like our life goal is one of them? It says, it, Can I say one thing to that, what you just said about like, because I feel like even people that grow up with mothers, right? Our moms is like, treat women with respect, open the door, like treat ladies like this. So like you first go into your relationship like that. But at the same time, women might want that, but they're not necessarily attracted to that. So you're up here holding the door open for a woman and treating her nice, and she kind of just blows you off. So now in your head, you're like, wow, the things that I was taught that are, are, are things that you should do for a woman, when you do them for a woman, a woman, it's like, you're nothing. You know, you're not, you're not desirable no more. You're the nice guy. It's, you know, so, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, so you, I think once that happens, you're like, man, if I would have treated you, because every guy, someone feels like the girl that they treated nice that hurt them, if they would have treated them like the hoes that they had, they probably would still be around. 
Because I got a girl that, that is like one of my exes that was the same way, where I was like, if I would have treated her totally different than how I treated her, she probably would still be here. But like, I treated her great. So mm -hmm. I think that like, that's something that we get stuck with or we move forward through with. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's been times too, like Norman, like I didn't been nice, chivalrous, get X, Y, and Z, man. They just throw me to the side. And then when yeah. I talk, when I talk to a girl crazy, cuss her ass out, you know, just dog her, then she want to act right. And I'm it's just, like, I mean, but I mean, I mean, I think that's on the women. That's not, that's, that's what they go through, but it's just crazy. Like, why do I have to talk to you like this? For yeah. you to act, for you to act right. Like, it I don't, sounds I don't, like I men and women, like you said, Byron, are going through the same exact thing. It's yes. the wrong, the wrong, like the nice girl hooks up with the asshole who yes. makes her into a jerk, right? And and the nice guy gets the evil girl and and makes him his, his heart hardened. The nice people ain't connected, and the evil people ain't connected. Like that's, that's yeah, but that really Opposites attract. Yeah, they, they're not attracted to that though. That's the thing. It's like they want something, but they're not attracted to that. Do y'all men cool. like nice girls too, or is it like less of a challenge? Oh, yeah. Because there's all yeah. kind of books that come out like why men love bitches. Nice weird though. It's kind of like nice weird, nice, weird. Like, you know, nice, nice in public with mom and family and job, but not so nice in the bed. You <laughs> want a nice savage. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. I think that there's no, there, there's becoming no balance anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you talk to like old men, it was like, man, everybody was crazy, but your mama, she, you know, she made me change, right? Yeah. It's always like a woman that makes you like change or you look at her differently. You like, you know what, like I like all these girls and you get that one woman that makes you just look at her totally different where you're like, I don't want to hurt her. But now I feel like the, the times that we're in, the era that we're in, just because of social media, because of all the, exterior influence women are are not the same they're not operating that same way they're like all right fuck it i'm gonna do this, this, this. like there's no there's no team base there's no balance anymore you know because women are doing things worse than men now i'm like damn so well, I, you know, really really looking at it though when you really think about it the reason why men and women have such strong dynamics is because of the church right in our community yeah. so we were taught very early on you get a good man or you, you get a good woman, you settle down, you have kids, you do this. A lot of people aren't doing that. They're doing careers. They're, they're getting married later. They're even thinking about kids later. So the whole dynamic is different. And a lot of people aren't even going to church anymore. So who's teaching them what? You know, it's like, so wh where is the standard? There isn't. And so everybody's kind of making, up, making it up as they go along. But the other side of that is men are taught early on, hide your feelings. So don't even deal with your emotions. If you deal with your emotions, you're a punk. So, and, and so, but then women still want a man that is somewhat emotional, but doesn't really express his emotion, but is somehow sensitive and somehow sweet, but isn't supposed to ever express any kind of emotion in a way that's other than strong and aggressive. Like it's completely confusing. And I'm until confused. men and women get on the same page with that, it, anybody gets on the same page with that, it's always going to be confusing and relationships will always be more difficult than they're supposed to. I like to apologize on behalf of the female race. I do know that is true because I have conversations with my friends. I'm like, you, you ask for all kinds of contradictions and how is someone going to know that? How yeah. is someone going to know that? Um, I have a question for, for Prince T-Dub. Are, are you showing weakness if uh, you, you show that you're hurt? Do you feel like that's showing weakness if you show a woman that you're hurt? Uh. Do I think it's showing weakness? Um, it's in the middle. Um, I think sometimes they do need to know, you know, some of the things that you went through and why you act the way you act, you know, in my opinion. So I don't think it's weakness, you know, but I think that she could use it against you at some mm -hmm. point, like maybe bringing it back up, you know, or something like that. So yeah, I'm in the middle with it. Okay. What's an automatic turnoff when it comes to dating? I want to start with Donovan. What's a what's a turnoff for you? Like right away, you're like, oh no, this is this is a red flag for me or a turnoff. Um, I'm a I'm a Leo. Mm -hmm. So like I don't I don't like being told what to do. Like you're not gonna tell me like what I'm about to do. Like, that's some fire signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Like that's a turnoff. I'm a big like hair person. Like you know, I like I like good you know nice hair. You know, nice skin. Like I feel like that's a given. But um, but but like turn your turn off. Like you're not gonna tell me what I'm gonna do. Like, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a ex, I'm gonna listen to you. We gonna we gonna talk about it. But I just don't like being bossed around. Like that's my thing. 
Okay. Byron, how about yourself? So when it comes to like relationships, for me, it's completely about um, two people who can talk to each other in a way that is loving, caring, and respectful. Um, I always say uh, two partners, whoever they are, should be able to treat each other like they're both authority figures in the home. So like Donovan said, you don't boss me around because you consider me an authoritative, authoritative figure in your life, but also I consider you consider you one as well. We, we co-opt the authority in a relationship. So having that duality and mutuality where we can actually just talk and deal with each other like equals, which I don't think we say enough, male to female, I don't think we say equals enough. Mm-hmm. We say male, female, which is not always equal in our minds. Uh, when we treat each other like equals and there's equal respect and we can date on an equal level. Okay. Norman, how about you? Turn off when it comes to dating. What's the turn off you? Media turn off. Um, arguing. Mm. I hate arguing. Um, <laughs> and good luck, huh? No, um, no, argument. And I just always felt like if I don't like, if I'm with somebody that's not adding value to me, like emotionally, spiritually, or mentally, or any, you know, if we're not adding value to each other, then we're just taking from each other. And sometimes like, the the biggest turnoff to me is people that take and that could be emotionally that and it could just it's a lot of things where it's like if you're not adding value to me and you're taking from me i could feel it right away okay and i could i could feel it and that's like the biggest turnoff for me okay prince tito uh definitely an attitude bad attitude to turn off of me uh oh. and uh somebody just post all their business on social media you know, mm-hmm. if you post too much and you just always arguing with somebody or you got to run and tell your business to it, like that's a turn off for me. Okay, okay, okay. Those are all good. You know what? I'm, I'm proud of y'all. You all gave insightful and thoughtful uh, answers. Nothing was surfaced of, of anything you really said. And I like that we're having this conversation. It seems like by the comments in the uh, in the YouTube uh, channel that they're, they're feeling it too. I think... <laughs> I, I can't remember who said it first, but it doesn't seem to be a lot of spaces where men can have these conversations to see that they're more than these things that we think that they're these always strong, never emotional, never get their feelings hurt, just got it. Like we good, there's nothing more there than just a desire for sex and that's it. And there's so much more, there's so many more layers. So we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with more of these gentlemen when we return right here on Out Loud on Fox Soul. Welcome back to Out Loud right here on Fox Soul. We're having conversations about relationships and sex and we're getting the truth from these brothers, ladies. So pay attention. Now listen, at the start of the pandemic, Tinder recorded three, hold up, this is real, three billion swipes, which was the highest number of swipes on a single day. Three billion swipes. Are you surprised with this number? I'm I'm not surprised. I, I'm oh. pretty I'm pretty sure Hinge probably had just as much too. Like that's another app. Everybody. Isn't Hinge that's go it's straight for sex, right? Hinge is more about a sex app, isn't it? I, I, I think they both are. Honestly, <laughs> right. they both. Yeah. Not to call you out or anything, but that's what I kind of was told that Hinge is getting straight <laughs> to it. Set up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, it's time for me to get into your business. Are y'all ready? Let's do it. Go. Oh. All right, Byron, I want to ask you, can, can men and women meet quality people on a dating app? What do you think about that? Absolutely, but it's all in how you set it up. Um, it, first of all, your profile has to be honest. It can't have a whole bunch of negative things, what you don't like. It needs to be about what you do like, who you really are, so that you can attract the right type of things to your profile. Um, you got to be careful how your profile pick looks, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I teach on that, and I do believe you can. Uh, I have a lot of good people that find good people on there and especially uh, long distance and, okay. and in your city. If you don't really go out like that, it can be good, especially for a pandemic. So yes, possible, but there are a lot of things you have to know how to do to make it work. Well, I need to know from the other three fellas, how many of y'all have a dating profile right now on a dating app and is it working? Have y'all been using it? Norman? No, nah, I don't have one. Okay. Um, Princey? Up. You nah, got you want tender what you want, tender. I ain't got one. He was uh, telling me about another one. I want to get that one for <laughs> me. No, <laughs> nah, I ain't got one. Donovan? Uh no, nah, I don't have one. I had the hinge for a second, but it just it just wasn't for me because I don't know. I feel like 
you know, I was on TV, I was on Baller, so I just feel like it's kind of corny, like, being on one of them apps and then trying to, you know, I just like meeting people in person. Like, that's my thing. Right. Like, I'm old-fashioned with it. But I will slide in the DM, though. I'm not going to lie. It's, okay, what about women that, okay, say you, you, you match on these dating apps when, when if y'all ever were on one, okay? If a, or, or even Instagram, let's just say DMs. I think a lot of us more are on DMs. If a woman sends you news, early on is that a turn on or turn off prince i'll start with you before we do anything she just sent them yep to you know showing you how sexy she is like what she got what she working on <laughs> yeah i think she up to something uh, oh yeah were you entrusted yeah i ain't trusting that like you trying to what you trying to get me over there that fast for like why are you <laughs> just sending out uh, no nah, i ain't asked for them and you sent them then yeah okay cool. donovan turn on or um, turn off news I mean, it's a turn on, then it's a turn off. Cause I'm like, oh shit, cool. But like, I, my thing is like, who else are you sending this to? Like, I'm not the only person that's getting these news. Like, that's my thing. Like, and um, and now girls got only fans page. So I know it's probably on there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then sometimes she'll, they be like, don't, don't send me the news and then send me a cash up after. Like I thought this was, <laughs> was free. <laughs> is that what they're doing? Are they doing that? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. You gotta pay for the rest. Man. Damn. Okay. Uh, ladies, if y'all are here doing that in these streets, it's kind of low-key solicitation. Y'all gotta stop that. Okay. And then don't be all talking about two white material after the fact. Stop it. Norman, how about no, you? I encourage it. Hey. Whenever I get news from women, like, I just, I, I'm honest. I'm like, oh, that was a good, you know, that was nice. Like, I like it. I heart it. Keep it going. But would you I'm date like, a woman? Would you, would you take her seriously? Would would I I that, her is that seriously? not a problem? Mm -hmm. If she sent me nudes right away? Well, early on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Norman, maybe, I, no. Maybe <laughs> Never. <laughs> maybe there's something special about you. She felt a bond and she felt that. But she just wanted to send me like Gucci yeah. pictures and stuff like right away. And I've never met her before. That's crazy. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's, you know, you walk into some dangerous territory right there because it's like, that's, that's a little different. She she just got her body done. Just fresh off the surgery though. She, you know, she I'm going to say keep sending them, you know. She like, wanna, wanna show you what, what, what she did. I wanna keep seeing the updated pictures. I just, you know, I wanna uh, see the transition. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad y'all talk. Now, okay, uh, Norman, another one for you. Uh, if you saw your friend's um, uh, ex-girlfriend online and you knew she liked you, would you connect with her or log off? Like if she was flirting with you, would you, have you ever like told that line with one of your homies, uh, ex-girlfriend, she's his ex now. Okay, so so hold on, hold on. Let me, you know, need to specific. <laughs> all right, you gotta get specific right here, right now. All right. So uh, one of my homies, right? How close? close? Like we're real close. Like that's that's my dog. That's my guy. That's you, you know, tell that's, me. You tell me in which situation you be with it. You tell hold me. on, yeah, you gotta be real specific right now. All right? <laughs> <laughs> like how close? Do I just see the dude and pass? Do I know him or? <laughs> Y'all cool. Y'all have each other's numbers. Not just not your best friend, because of course that's an obvious, right? Right. But yeah. you, yes, you, you cool. Y'all may, you know, play ball sometimes. And his, and his ex, okay, and his ex girl tried to hit me up to like hang out. So yeah, flirt with you online. If, if that was my friend, no, okay. no, I, I, I would be like, nah, like I can't, you know. There's more women out there, but like I wouldn't, I wouldn't. But if it wasn't like if I wasn't really close, I mean, I'd I'd entertain it. Okay. We have a YouTube comment from Keisha. She said, Norman must be for the streets. <laughs> what you mean? Look, okay, so y'all don't want nobody to answer honestly? No, I <laughs> love Listen, that's that's honestly, honestly, talk to me, we good. I log right off. That's we good. Honestly, bro. I log oh. off in the mid-sentence. We need these honest answers. No, nah, the bullshit it, is- honestly, Everybody would do that. If, 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 if they, depending on how their ex looked, if you were cool, like nobody would just- and you single, like, why would you not? Maybe maybe that's a connection. Maybe that's, right, Pastor? Maybe that's God's connection for something special. Brother, brother let me tell you something. Let me, let oh, you went with let the, me he went to God, he went to God, he brought you in. Come on, what I'm saying? Is, I mean, this, is what this is what happens, okay? I get these calls from my clients and they've been doing the same thing. All right, so 
uh, the reality is this. That is absolutely true. Have a talk with your homeboy. Have a talk with your homeboy. Because it could be. It could be that that connection is actually. There's a reason why they broke up, right? So yeah. they, they don't own that woman. They don't own that person. So if, 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 they are, if it was a clean cut and they approve of it, go yeah. for it. But, you know, if they, if they still got some feelings. Do like Donovan says, say, man up. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, so you saying, you saying if they was together and she liked it you while they was together? So you no, like. They're not together. No, no, not together anymore. After they broke up. No, I know, but you know, like while they was together, did she wink at you? Like, how did you know that she. <laughs> You I know, don't think Claudia told us all that in the background. Yeah, you didn't say you got to be specific. <laughs> you don't know. Excuse me. I love that nobody was able to just say just off rip. No. Yeah, I was like, well, how she that ain't no awkward that question. That's not an awkward question. No. If she not cute, no. if she is no question. If she not cute, then it's no. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It depends on a friend, like he was saying. It depends on what type of relationship y'all got. Now, if I can't sit back and think to myself that you would never do this to me if the shoe was on the other foot. Yes. If I can't successfully think that, then I'm responding back. You can come on over this evening. You know what I'm saying? But if I feel like I watch too much divorce court, okay? I know we all for the streets. You know, people be doing that all the time. So they be friends, they be friends right? for 20 years and they be sleeping with the with the oh. girlfriend. So no, 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 no. I don't, That's true. Nah, it, it's open. Okay. Okay. Some friends, we it, all for the streets. It's some type, it's some friendships where like I got friends that I would never, no matter what, you know what I'm saying, just off the strength that yeah. you know, our relationship. Right. I don't care right. how old it was. I don't care if it was in grammar school. I right. wouldn't cross that line. You know, I right. wouldn't follow her back. You know, I, I don't even follow certain friends, girl, ex-girl. I don't, I'm not gonna follow you to even put myself in a position where we can flirt and connect after y'all break up. So you know, what, you know what's hard these days? Um it seems like with social media, the world got a lot smaller, right? So it seems like, and we all have those friends that just, God damn, you was with that person too? Like they did with everybody. And it's like, I know there's one girl, actually like two girls. I'm like, if I had to put everybody on a do not call list that y'all two been with, there'd be nobody to date. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and, but I, I know, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you you know, some people that just want to claim and put everybody on label, like, oh, I went out with him before or I hit that. I was, I'm like, Okay, so because you was with all these people, none of us, one of them could be our husbands if you done took up the whole city. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's people here who have really ran through them all. Mm. Yeah, that's true. And that becomes like a difficult situation. Like, uh, but that's a, different, that's a different case there because now you said an ex, you know, so if this is an ex, like this was a relationship that we seen, like you was in. You know, but now. Prince T.W., you know that there are people that claim an ex even if they went on two dates. Yep. Okay, so, yeah. that, that, you know, they, they'll say ex and you got to you got to investigate. Like, OK, well, how 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 long were y'all together? And with girls, a girl will claim a guy if he hit on her first. Yeah, like we they, talked. We, talk, we was talking. It's a women and men talking. thing. Yeah, because oh. my homies wouldn't call it an ex unless... You know, right. and this yeah, was a real she yeah, cooked yeah, something yeah. in the morning. She washed some clothes, you know. That's an act. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break and we have more of this conversation with these men when we come back more in Fox Soul when we return. Welcome back to Out Loud with the girl Claudia Jordan. We are back with Byron Jamal, Donovan Carter, Norman Towns, and Prince T dub. And these guys are giving us the tea on the dating experience. And, you know, giving us some real talk that, you know what, you may not like it, but you will respect it because it's honest. And um, uh, T-Dub, I want to ask you about this. Um, Prince T-Dub, I'm sorry about that. Uh, have you ever chatted with someone online and then when you met them, you were like hella disappointed or you were disappointed like, damn, you almost like your pictures. Has uh, that ever happened? No, because I want to FaceTime a little bit. You know, <laughs> I want a video chat. I want to catch you off guard. I may call you 11, 12 o'clock at night. Let me see how you look. You know what I'm saying? So... I ain't never met up with nobody who I didn't cease in some form, you know, mm -hmm. before I got there. There's a lot of sorcery going on nowadays with Photoshop and pictures. I remember I saw this guy online. He was fine as hell. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a little, I have a group event, like bowling or something. I'll invite him something safe where it's not one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. When he showed up, like in person, and the pictures, the hairline was here. In person, it was 
all like he photoshopped from here all he dragged it all the way like six inches and i was like oh my this is a different human being this is not the same person so you know sometimes it'd be a little you got to facetime these people first <laughs> like they can't photoshop facetime you know what i'm saying you got the video chat use it zoom oh he got me good he got me byron how, how the rules change when it comes to, you know when it comes to dating and, and who should make the first move nowadays are the rules oh, different now? Oh, completely. Um, first of all, with the women's liberation movement and, and Me Too and all of that, I mean, there's women have equal footing in being able to approach a man. Again, going back to what I said earlier, all that stuff was because of a lot of stuff that you know we, we ingrained into our culture years ago uh, when we were growing up. We heard our grandmama say that you, you're supposed to wait for a good man. Even in the Bible, it talks about a, a man that findeth a wife and people use that. But the truth is, any way you can get your partner, get your partner. So if it's you approaching somebody, approach. If it's them approaching, let them approach. But, but don't. Nobody should be afraid to talk to anybody these days. Is it a turnoff, fellas? Is it a turnoff if a, 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 someone is too aggressive or a woman comes off strong? A Donovan, I want to start with you. If a woman is hitting on you or hollering at you, uh, you've mentioned a couple times, you know, being on television and not knowing people's motives. Like, you know, we hear these messages like, no, it's cool, go for a girl. But then we also hear the double, the other side, like, uh, you know, what's our, mo what's our motive? How do you feel about women that, that step to you? I mean, it just, it just, you know, first it depends how you look. Like if you're not, you know, if I'm not really attracted to you, you know, I will hope you get the hint. But if I'm feeling you, you know, I like it. Like I, I'm more like old school. I think, you know, I feel like God should you know approach a girl, but you know I feel like if you feeling a dude, give him a little bit of you know give him a little bit of something, little little eye action, you know, little some some just to let me know you interested. Okay. But if you're too aggressive, like you know, if you had a little bit too much to drink and you doing too much, I don't you know I don't like that. Like you know I don't, I don't if I'm not interested, I'm not interested. But I you know I appreciate the love though. I might still get you a drink, you know, and that's and that's about it. But all but right, it, it depends. It depends on how aggressive. How she aggressive. Is. Okay, mm -hmm. levels. Norman, would you be intimidated by a successful woman, you know, a woman that makes more money than you? How do you feel about that, Norman? No, wouldn't be intimidated. Uh, <laughs> it's like, good. Nah, uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I, I, I think for me, it's kind of hard for me to be with a woman that, that is at that level just because of the way that they talk to you. Because sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like when women get some type of money, they feel like they have some power and some type of control over you if they're at a different level than you. And like, I'm more of an alpha personality to where it's like, it doesn't work out well with me. Like, I don't do good with somebody like treating me different because I'm not on a level of finances or whatever. So like, it's weird because I could attract women like that. But like, the thing is, it's like the dynamics, like you can't just put like, I wish, I really wish deep down, I was like more of someone that could be, you know, I, I, I wish that I could be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll pull out this or do this or do this for you. But that's just not who I am. So uh, we have Kelly in the chat basically said, so if a woman treat a man, treat the man the way men treat women, like when they make more money. Yeah, 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 exactly. She's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I've seen it before. Right? I've, I've seen dudes talk to their girls any type of way. I was like, damn, but like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. You got to be humble. I wish I could have. You know, huh? I feel like you got to be humble about it. Like, yeah. I done made it a girl, you know, she made a little money. And like, I, you know, I'm like, I get it, baby. You make money. I get it. Like, yeah. you know, you, she older, of course. I say, you know, you older, like, you you know, we supposed to be making money. That's, that's what we do. But I just Are you, like hit, she, you hit it with the back, the backhand of compliment that you, oh, you pay, you pay, but you, oh, you old bitch. So you supposed to make more money than me. Huh? Yeah, like that, that's a given. <laughs> like that, we all supposed to be working. We all supposed yeah. to be working. <laughs> We pay taxes like I get it, baby. Like relax. Oh, that was 86. good. Donovan. Oh, Donovan, you Donovan. are a character. Donovan's Donovan a character. He low key. <laughs> it's Prince uh, T Dub, is it okay for a woman to talk about sex on the first date? Is that a, again like I'm just trying to get to the the specifics? Right now. Like, is it a turn on or turn off? He said, on the first date to talk about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's talk about it. You know, <laughs> that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to communicate, talk, you know, and you know, tell me the stuff you like, I tell you the stuff I like. We're supposed to do that. So it ain't a turn off at all on the first date. Now the first phone call, you know, you trying to get me over there and you on some, then I'm gonna start looking at you shady because I just don't trust 
you know, everybody, you know. So if you're trying to bribe me with your goodies, I look at it funny. So it's okay. So men, what about the men? Like, yeah, I'll be trying to get it on the first date. And so should we be, should, should it throw off our spider sense if you're trying to throw your peen on the crap table as well? Because y'all, you know what I'm saying? Over the phone or in person? In person. In person, we gonna do that. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? That's what you supposed to do with that. Over the phone on Instagram, we ain't we ain't doing it there. What about talking about ex boyfriends? Do y'all want to hear about that, or is that a total turn off? No. You, know, you want to tell me no. about it? Tell me about it. You know, I want to know what he did, so I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't give nobody. Yeah, no. I, don't, I don't even hear that about your Nine times out of ten, you got still got baggage with that situation. So now the conversation is going to be negative. We're going to hear you. We, you're going to be half crying in the car. No, we good. You got this, to be there for her. You got to be there. <laughs> that's too early. You that's too, to, you're giving too much too, too early. soon. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, the that. that's the problem. We give too much too soon. We need to take it. Mm. The, the first few dates should just be about getting to know each other, what you like, what you like to do, how you like to hang out, type of people you like. To, we, we Exes and stuff, that's like date three, four, five. Let's, let's, mm. let's wait on that. And before we go to break, I want to just pose this question. I want y'all to think about it. And when we come back, I want y'all to answer this if you can. Why do men almost always call their ex-girlfriends crazy when it doesn't work out? We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more with these fun guys. We have a, we have a good time with y'all. More Out Loud or Fox Soul when we return. Welcome back to Out Loud or Fox Soul. Before we went to break, I asked these fellas, why would men break up with their girls? I always, I mean, the next, when you date, you go on a date with them, they always say about their ex-girlfriend, almost always, man, she was crazy. Why, what is it about this? Byron, you, you kind of, the professional here, what, what is that about? Well, nine times out of 10, the male ego is going to instantly want to think anybody that doesn't want him, it got to be crazy. <laughs> There's no way you would want to let me go. You should fight for me. You shouldn't be just trying to let me. So of course you crazy. Why would... What else would you be if you're not with me, right? That's that's male ego. So number one reason would be ego. That makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. Like, I think you just said it perfectly. Anyone else want to add to that before we get to the game? Y'all, y'all agree with them? Women know they crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what? But they do crazy. Women know they crazy. There ain't no discussion. They know what it is. <laughs> is there an argument to be made that sometimes y'all make us crazy with uh, the lies? Uh, I I'm, I would say I'm, my situation. I mean, she was crazy, but <laughs> I made I made her crazy by some of the stuff. Uh, I did. Were, you you Were you lying? Were you lying? Yeah, I was a liar and a cheater, you know, back in the day. Don't blame yourself, King. It but, wasn't your uh, ah! <laughs> This is support for you. We here to support you, D. Don't even worry about it. She would have been crazy. She would have been, been crazy anyway, though. She would have been crazy anyway, though. But, you know, I yeah. add a few. I just add a lighter lighter fuel to the fire. That's it. That's my yeah. You're the first man I've ever heard admit that. This really? Is a, this is a Fox Soul first. This is the nah, first time. Probably gonna, gonna be the last. Hey, <laughs> I did some crazy stuff too. <laughs> you know what? Because I, I you by yourself, Donovan. Hey, I did some crazy yeah. stuff too. We all did. We yeah. all have. No, we all have. Support group. We are we are breaking through here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We are breaking through because uh, yeah, the lies will make you feel like why can't you just tell the truth? I've seen you with my own eyes, and a guy would be like. Who you gonna believe me? Are them lying eyes of yours? Oh, my eyes are lying and you not lying? Y'all know. All right. Oh, we're gonna play play a little game before we leave. Um, it's a game called Tie the Knot or Rather Not. I'm gonna present you with a scenario and you're gonna tell me if you'd rather tie the knot and get married or simply say rather not, which means you prefer to not get married or settle down. All right, are y'all ready to go? Sure. All right. Okay, you've met the perfect woman. And she checks off everything on your list of what you want, but she has children and you prefer not to have kids. Will you tie the knot or rather not? Norman? Rather not. Rather not. Okay, Donovan? How many kids and baby daddies? Ah. That's what I thought about. Yeah. Let's, say, let's say two. Two kids and two baby daddies? I... I'd rather not. Yeah, you better be honest. <laughs> Prince? Down. If it's close to income tax season, I'm gonna go on tie the knot. <laughs> no, I didn't plan. I didn't plan. No, I, the kids ain't a problem for me, so I'll I still um I probably tie the knot with her, depending on. Do I got kids in this situation? <laughs> you know, 
No. Okay. Okay. If I ain't got no kids, then yeah, I'm a tie knot. But if I got other kids, then she got oh. kids. Okay. We have a minute left. I'm gonna try to get to this last one. Uh, the woman you're interested in previously dated women before you met. Tie the knot, or rather not. Whoever wants to go first. Tie the knot. I didn't no, tie the knot. Funny is. Yeah. Yeah. We tied a knot. We can tie the knot. That's cool. We'll see. <laughs> Donovan. We tied in on it. Yeah. <laughs> On standards. Man, I wish I had more time to get some more of these games. These with you. Y'all, y'all were a lot of fun. I want to thank Byron Jamal, Donovan Carter, Norman Towns, and Prince T Dub for joining me tonight and for really keeping it 100. Ladies, I hope y'all were paying attention. Gentlemen, this was a great conversation. I really appreciate your honesty. And I'd love to have you back in the future. This was a lot of fun. I hope you had a good time. Yes. Well, All right, cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much for watching us on the Fox Soul TV mobile app. Stay tuned for the mix that's all coming up next. And I'll see you back here tomorrow right here in Fox Soul.